we have the opportunity to reward that contribution, reward that sacrifice. Governor Gavin Newsom there in September touting legislation that would increase the minimum wage for California's fast food workers from $16 to $20 an hour, one of the highest in the nation. That minimum wage goes into effect Monday, April 1st. Now, already we are seeing the impact of the impending wage hike. Major chains, including Chipotle, McDonald's, Starbucks, Jack in the Box, and Shake Shack, saying diners, the consumers, will see higher menu prices as a result. With more on the impacts of the wage hike, I'm joined by David Newmark. He's the professor of economics at UC Irvine and a minimum wage expert. You're the perfect person to have this conversation with. Thank you, Professor, for being with me tonight. What do you make of this wage hike that takes effect Monday? Well, I, I, based on the research, I don't think minimum wages are that effective in the first place. California, as you probably know, already has a high minimum wage uh, for, for all workers. And then this is a very odd policy that sets it higher for fast food workers. And honestly, uh, I don't have an explanation, and I've asked a lot of other experts, and they don't have an explanation either. Um, I don't know why a, a somebody making hamburgers at McDonald's is entitled to a higher minimum wage than somebody making hamburgers at a diner. Uh, it, it, I can't think of a social purpose this serves, and it just seems like it's going to exacerbate some of the adverse effects of minimum wages that already occur, and it's going to boost prices a bit, as you as you indicated, already occurring, perhaps. Well, let's talk about, you know, the pros and the cons of it, because you were quoted in the New York Times as saying this creates winners and losers. So obviously the winners would be those who are working and get an automatic pay bump as of Monday, who are actually in the uh, industry already. And there's about 500,000 of them in California. So those are the winners. What about, and, and are there other winners with that said, before I get to the other the other side? No, I don't think so. I think I think that's right. I mean, there are there are clearly some people, many people, who will keep their jobs, and some of them will not have their hours reduced, and they'll be making more money. Uh, uh, they gain. I think, though, the debate is often about as often takes place as if that's the only effect, and that's a, a gross oversimplification. Okay, right. So on the other side of the coin is this could mean uh, we've already seen the impact. Pizza Hut has already laid off uh, some workers. Uh, there's going to be fewer hours, perhaps. And then also the smaller chains, they could go out of business as a result of this. And even those who are exempt from it could be impacted. I think that's right. I, I mean, I, I think there's research that unambiguously shows that there is some job loss and some hours reductions from a higher minimum wage. And, you know, losing your job is a, is a bigger hit to income than the, the wage bump for the people who, who, of course, retain their job. It's a huge hit to income. Um, so that will happen. I, I think you're right that uh, some of these are pretty low margin businesses, and this is a big increase. And, we'll, you know, it might, I, I don't know if you'll close tomorrow because of this, but perhaps the more important margin is someone who was thinking of opening now sees this as a less profitable opportunity uh, and may not. So that's probably the more likely channel of adjustment there. And finally, Research shows that prices go up when this happens. For every 10% increase, prices at fast food restaurants go up about one to one and a half percent. So this is roughly a 30% increase, you know, three to four and a half percent, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, inflation went from three to seven percent, and people went kind of ballistic. Um, yeah. So those those things matter. And the other thing to remember is, you know, I think to some extent. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're doing something that's going to raise the price of fast food. It's not going to raise the price of luxury cars. And I say that because low-income people are more likely to be affected by these price increases than what happened if prices went up for some other, let's say, luxury good. Yeah, I mean, I think that we should, you know, hammer that point home a little more in that the fact that we're dealing with inflation. There was just the pandemic that wasn't all that long ago. And now the consumer, which tends to be the lower income households, will have to pay. You estimated, according to what I saw in articles today, two and a half to almost four percent more when they head to McDonald's, say. Right. And, and again, it's not a huge amount, but but it all adds up. Yeah. And, and you saw that when inflation went up, we weren't having hyperinflation. We weren't having 20 percent inflation, but people still felt it. Uh, you know, if you're constrained on income, you feel it. I have, I, I'll tell you a funny story. You know, I was engaged in a debate about this a long time ago, and somebody said, you know, I walk into a fast food restaurant and I'm not sure on which side of the counter there, people are poor. And that goes to the point that low income people consume mm -hmm. lower price stuff, including lower price meals. 
Uh, and some of those paying, you know, the, the higher price is probably going to fall disproportionately. And there's some research to back this up on families that are lower income in the first place. All right. Well, I, I enjoyed our conversation. Thanks again for being with us. UC Irvine Professor David Newmark, thanks so much.